You fall in love with the value of the Ruger Max 9 and you bought one. But now you want to know what kind of optics will work with the gun and how do I install it. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the carry optics capabilities of the brand new Ruger Max 9 and how to install a red dot. What's up everybody, welcome Squad Squad and welcome to Slav Guns. I'm glad to have you here. As always, Ruger caused quite a stir when they announced their first optics ready carry gun, the brand new Ruger Max 9. It's a double stack carry gun capable of holding either 13 or 11 rounds of 9mm with either 12 or 10 round magazines. Most of all, it is exceptionally priced with an MSRP of just under $500 and a street price of a bit below that. If you haven't seen my detailed video on the Max 9 yet, then do take a look at it linked above. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at and we're going to explore what optics work with the Max 9 and my recommendations for a couple of price points. One of the main advantages of the Ruger Max 9 is that you're able to use a red dot sight while maintaining a rear sight. More than that, you can also co-witness the dot and the sights. The Ruger Max 9 is cut for a J point or a shield pattern red dot and these were designed for subcompact pistols and use a smaller footprint than your typical Trigicon RMR, Doctor, or Vortex type sights. Two of my favorite dots in this footprint and the ones that I think you should seriously consider are the SIG Romeo Zero, which I had in my initial video, and this awesome red dot, the Sentinel by Swamp Fox Optics. Since we already played with the SIG Romeo Zero in the past few videos, I'll be installing the Swamp Fox Sentinel in this video. The Sentinel is also available in a fully automatic model, which will adjust the brightness based on the ambient light. Both of the Swamp Fox sights come with a nice 3 MOA dot, and these sights are very well made. I'll soon have a detailed video on both and those in the near future. And if you are watching this in the future, it will be linked above. So let's take a look at how this pistol comes out of the box, the required tools, and what you need to do to install a red dot of your choice. When you get your Ruger Max 9, the gun is going to come with this plate installed. With the Max 9, this really is just the plate, and when you mount a red dot, you do not need to remove the rear sight. The cover plate is secured by two Torx T10 bolts and the gun will come with the required wrenches. You have previously seen me use this toolkit from Fixit Sticks and I highly recommend it. This is the Fixit Sticks kit with the all-in-one torque driver and the kit will come with the most commonly used bits and is exceptionally well made. You can find a link for these tools in the description box below and there is a special discount code for Squat Squad members as well. So let's remove the top plate and then we'll set it aside or just put it back in the box. Okay, and I'm gonna use the T10. So there are two, one, two. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Make sure you do not lose these and you can put them back in the box. And you can take the base plate off. Next, inside the box, you'll find a small envelope with two pins inside. Take the two pins and drop them in the rear two corners as I have here. Now, these two pins should drop right in and you should have to use no force. Now, the purpose of the pins is to provide an additional anchor to keep the red dot in place. Do note that these pins will work with most J-point or shield cut sights. However, if you're using the new Holosun HS407K and HS507K optics, you will not be using the two pins and just keep them with the packaging. The cool part is once you drop the pins in, even if you remove the red dot, the two pins will work with the cover on them. So you do not need to remove them in the future unless you change into one of those Holosun, Holosun sights. I also use this as an opportunity to wipe the excess oil from the top of the slide to make sure it doesn't get anywhere inside the optic, especially if it uses the battery from the bottom. Now next, we are going to take our optic. Okay. So next what we're going to do is take our optic, drop it on top, and you want to make sure it's dry fitting and 
is going to sit on there nice and snug. And take the time to install the battery, particularly if it feeds from the bottom. Most of the sites will come with some sort of a cover to protect the battery. So we're going to take that. There is our battery. Okay. Dot works. So this guy actually comes with this plate, which is really nice, and it's not just like a sticker. So okay, we're going to put the plate on there, and then we're just going to drop the optic right on top. Cool. Next, the gun is fretted to use the most common pattern of bolts, which is the M4 by 0.7 millimeters, and this should be the standard bolts that come with the red dots. This was the case for both the Sig Romeo Zero and the Swamp Box Sentinel. What's nice is that if you're buying the Sentinel, you can also purchase their bolts kit, which will come with a variety of bolts to fit almost any gun. So I'm just threading it in. I'm not actually tightening it all the way. Okay. Assuming you have the optic on the gun and it fits well, you want to find out what the recommended torque specifications are. If you do not tighten the bolts down to the correct specification, the red dot may lose zero over time, meaning the red dot point of aim will shift over time. If you tighten down the red dot too much, you might end up cracking or damaging the circuit board or electronics inside. Keep in mind, many of the pattern dots are tiny with less empty space underneath. Furthermore, the torque specifications may differ from dot to dot. For instance, for the Sig Romeo Zero, the specs call for 9 inch pounds. For the Sentinel, it's right around 15 inch pounds. To get the most accurate torque values, I recommend you pick up this new all-in-one torque driver from Fix It Sticks, which measures from as little as 6 inch pounds to 25 inch pounds, versus the original one, the orange one here, which measures from 15 to 65. If you're mounting any kind of optic, I highly recommend this mini torque driver. Okay, so just getting tug, snipe. So we're gonna go to 15, 10, 15. Fifteen. Okay. Now if you want, you can also apply a little bit of non-permanent Loctite, which would be the blue one. This will help keep the screws from walking out from recoil. Do note some other companies explicitly tell you not to do this. However, as per the Ruger manual, the use of Loctite is perfectly okay. One other thing you have to watch out for is if the bolts are bottomed out and the red dot is still not on snugly. In this case, take the screws out and file them down slightly and try again. An alternative is to use some shorter screws if you can find some. Next, you want to make sure that the red dot is working and a good starting point and something you cannot do with every red dot is to adjust the dot so that you can co-witness it with your sights. Very nice. Wow, this window's big. <laughs> this will give you a solid starting point as most factory handguns I find have their iron sights spot on. Now, if you find yourself having to constantly drift the sights on your firearms, it's not the firearms, but most likely your shooting technique. Don't take this the wrong way, but don't fix the gun to your broken technique, but work on your technique or find a gun that you can shoot more naturally. Now, once you adjust your dot to co-witness with your sights, go out and shoot some rounds. Shoot them from groups off of a bag and then make any final adjustments which you might need to do. Periodically, you do need to go back through and check the torque specifications for the bolts, especially if you did not use Loctites. One of the most common complaints for red dots is that they start to lose zero. Generally, in my opinion, this is due to the dot not being tightened down properly to the correct specification. So invest in some quality tools and it'll save you a lot more time and money down the road. If for any reason you want to remove the dot and go back to iron sights, then put the stock cover plate back on and secure it with the two original T10 Torx bolts and the specifications for those to the gun is 26 inch pounds. So that is how you install the red dot on your brand new Ruger Max 9 pistol 
and the process will be quite similar for any other gun as well. If you haven't watched my original video on the MAX-9 or the follow-up discussing how to clean and lubricate the gun, go ahead and watch those videos on your Ruger MAX-9 playlist linked above. If you're interested in these two excellent red dots, go ahead and check out the links in the description and I'll soon have a detailed video on these dots and you'll be able to find them linked above as well. As always, I appreciate you watching, keep on squatting, and I'll see you in the next video.